Welcome to the Virginia Civics and Economics Lecture Series. At the end of each slide, there will be a five second delay. Use this time to complete your notes. When you are done, push play and move on to the next slide. This presentation will begin in five seconds. Welcome to Virginia Civics and Economics Lecture 1.7b on Consent to the Governed, and it's time to talk about the three most famous words in American civics, we the people. We the people and our American government. Well, what does this really mean? What did we the people actually decide our American government would do? And isn't it the same all over the world? Well, let's see. Here, we have the royal family of Great Britain. That nice little lady in the middle, she's the Queen of England. And in England, the people did not consent to govern themselves. They consented to be governed by a royal family or a monarchy. Then we have these guys. The guy in the middle holding the gold bar, that's Vladimir Putin. And he is the president of Russia. He and a close circle of his friends run that country in what is known as an oligarchy. And then we've got these guys. They are dictators who run dictatorships. They run the country and everything they do goes. There's nobody else in charge but them. So we have different forms of government. The question is, how do citizens consent to be governed in all of these different ways? And what consent did we give to our government? We're going to answer those questions today. And with that said, go to the next slide. You learned in American history that the Founding Fathers came to Philadelphia to create a country based on life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But it's not like they made all that stuff up on their own. Instead, they relied on political philosophy to figure out how they would consent to be governed. Political philosophy is the study of fundamental questions about the state, government, politics, liberty, justice, and the enforcement of a legal code by authority. It doesn't need to be that complicated. Just ask Pinky and the Brain. Their political philosophy? Wait until tonight. Try to take over the world. Well, as you can imagine, the political philosophy relied on by our founding fathers was a bit more complex, and we need to go all the way back to ancient Greece to see how it all starts. Plato was a Greek philosopher who wrote the first treatise, or book, on political philosophy, and he called it the Republic. But we have a problem. Here's what Plato thought. Philosophers should rule the people. Founding fathers? Not so much. So they went forward in history, and they found the writings of Niccolo Machiavelli, who wrote the first modern treatise or book on political philosophy. It's called The Prince, and he wrote it during the Italian Renaissance. Here's what Machiavelli thought. A ruler should rule absolutely, and it's better to be feared than loved. Once again, the Founding Fathers weren't all that comfortable with that idea, so they went a little bit further into history, and they found the writings of Theodore Beza and John Milton, who set forth that a ruler's power is delegated to him by the people, and continues only with their consent. In other words, it's the people who give the rulers power to rule. And the people, they can take that power back. The Founding Fathers really liked that idea. Go to the next slide. Once the Founding Fathers realized that they had the power to create their own government, they had to figure out what type of government to create, and they relied on three principles of consent to make their decision. The first principle goes like this. Thomas Hobbes and John Milton stated that citizens need to live under authoritarian rule. In other words, a king by natural birthright rules all the people, or they, the people, will devolve or fall into what's known as the natural condition of mankind, which is really bad. It's a state of perpetual civil war. So Hobbes and Milton would have really liked to see someone like King Salman of Saudi Arabia running the country. The king is in charge, and without the king there, the country is going to fall to pieces. The second principle of consent goes like this. David Hume stated that consent is immaterial. 
nobody cares, as citizens rarely question the right of tyrants to rule except when tyranny becomes too oppressive. David Hume believed that people should be ruled by a dictator. Not that dictator. Now that's a dictator, and the people in North Korea will continue to be ruled by dictators until they can't stand it anymore. Here's the third principle of consent. John Locke, Thomas Jefferson, and George Mason believed that citizens delegate their natural rights, the rights they were born with, to protect their life and property to the government, as it is a better way of protecting those natural rights for all citizens. In other words, we have our natural rights, we could use those rights individually, but for everyone involved, it's just better if we give those rights to the government. Two of these guys were founding fathers, so we know that the ideas created by Locke, Jefferson, and Mason are the ideas we relied on when we created this country. Go to the next slide. Our founding fathers realized that they had the power to create their own government, and they also realized that the government was the best way to protect the natural rights of all citizens. But we still haven't talked about how we actually consent to be governed. Well, there are five types of consent, and I challenge you to try to figure out which consent do we find in the United States. First is unanimous consent. That's when everyone agrees to be governed, and those who do not are afforded the right of succession. You either agree to be governed, or you're gonna get out. Number two is hypothetical consent. That's when people should consent due to the nature of government, or would consent if their natural state warranted it. Not everyone's getting together and agreeing unanimously that this is our government, but everyone hypothetically says, I'm okay with the government we have. Third, we have overt consent and tacit consent. Overt consent is when citizens overtly consent to be governed. In other words, that is my leader and I agree to be governed by him or her. Tacit consent is when citizens are not in rebellion and consent to be governed. In other words, that's my leader. I agree to be governed by him or her. I promise I won't try to throw them out with an armed revolution. Fourth is engineered consent. This is when the ruler manipulates the public to consent to be governed, usually by offering incentives and controlling the media. And finally, we have literal consent. That's when the people have the absolute power to overthrow their government at any time via popular vote and referendum. So which consent do we find in the United States? Well, perhaps all five types of consent worked together in this country. The people, the citizens in this country show our consent to be governed by one or more of these types of consent. Thank you for watching this lecture and I look forward to seeing you in class.